G'day folks and welcome to Gourmet Shed. Well this week we're going to have a look at uh, soldering but more specifically soldering uh, a wire to the side of your rail. Uh, soldering into the webbing on the rail. Now uh, I know some of you out there uh, struggle a bit with this and uh, I, I'm just going to show you the method I use. Now I'm self-taught. Uh, I know there are other ways of doing it. Um, I don't use flux and uh, a lot of people do but this is just the method I use so uh, we'll have a look at what we need first of all this is my old soldering iron it's uh, it's nothing fancy uh, and you can see that uh, the the tip is not a real fine point and I've um, hit it with the grinder a few times to reshape it anyway but it's just a common or garden uh, soldering iron I've had it for so long I can't even remember what the wattage is now, but it would be no more than 40, it's probably 25. But uh, it's just, a, just a, a very common soldering iron. And one of the important things to, to get this done right is, um, is the right solder. I mean, this process is all about getting it done quickly not holding your iron on the solder for ages to get the solder to melt. So I use a very um, lightweight, uh, thin uh, solder. This is 60-40 uh, tin lead uh, composition, but it's only 0.7 of a millimetre. So it's very, very thin. And the, the thing with that is that once you touch the solder to the iron, it melts straight away. And, and this also would apply to um, rail and wires and all that sort of thing. So we'll see how all that works a, a bit later on. Now the other thing I use is, uh, itchy nose there. <laughs> the other thing I use is just this old poxy looking uh, screwdriver. Now this, this is something that you know could be thrown away. But I use this to scrape the rail to get it clean and uh, what I've done is I've put this on the grinder and I've put quite a sharp edge on the tip there but you could, you could do it with a file and every now and again you give it a hit with the file or the grinder just to keep that nice sharp edge on it because you're literally going to use this to scrape the edge of the rail to scrape it clean and give you something nice to solder onto and one of the other things folks I would suggest if you haven't got any of these these things are called helping hands and uh, it's a stand and it's got uh, these arms on it with a couple of alligator clips now if you if you whack a bit of wire into the alligator clip all of a sudden you've got two hands free if you want to solder the end of the wire I've actually used these to solder the end of a wire to the end of an LED lead you know by just bringing the two things together so these these are very handy indeed and uh, you know you can whack a couple of wires in there and solder the ends up uh, so, very handy tool to have if you can get your hands on them. Yeah, helping hands. Now folks, I've got myself an old crappy piece of, uh, this is Pico Code 100 rail. It's been around uh, longer than Adam. And it's been painted on the side of the rail and everything. Uh, it's of no real value to me. But, you can still get a good solder joint on that. And uh, I talked about cleanliness, and cleanliness is everything with soldering. Um, just imagine if you were trying to glue two pieces of plastic together and uh, before you uh, decided to put the glue on you smeared one side with some say Vaseline then put the glue on and tried to stick the two together it ain't gonna happen is it well it's the same with track I mean you might say well gee Gormo I've got brand new track I've just gone out and bought it at the shop big deal I say because all these uh, rails oxidize to some extent over time so even your brand new rail it might have some sort of oil residue on it it might be slightly oxidized you, you won't even be able to see it but it's on there 
and what you need is a bright shiny surface to solder to and uh, you can get a bright shiny surface on brand new rail or you can get a bright shiny surface on this old rail like this and uh, and that's what it's all about but the first thing you need to do is really understand uh, the limitations of your soldering iron regardless of what iron you're going to use you need to understand what it can do and really to do that you need to get yourself a piece of old track or a, an off cut that you've got and uh, test it with the iron put the iron up uh, against the webbing here and and sort of hold it against there and count one two three four etc and see how long it takes before the sleepers start to melt and then you'll understand what sort of time frame you've got to work with so uh, if your solder uh, melts after maybe one two but your sleepers melt at about ten well you've got a good range of time there to get the job done so you don't have to panic anyway um, the other thing is when you're going to solder make sure your irons warmed up uh, I know you get all conscientious and you want to you want to solder that wire onto the rail but it's no good attempting this until the iron is properly warmed up and uh, you know my iron takes a couple of minutes and then it will actually melt solder but I would say to get it truly warmed up probably takes five minutes or more so just turn it on leave it sit there go and do something else come back when it's really warmed up and then the job will work even better okay so um, what we'll do is start getting into the method now right folks I've just got the iron warming up but um, in the meantime I can show you how I clean this track now I've got that little screwdriver that I mentioned now you can see how it's all brown here that's paint on there so what I do is you know get quite aggressive with it and just scrape that stuff off and even try and get up under the webbing if you've got to turn the screwdriver a bit I hope you can see what I'm doing here now that's the sort of surface you need and it's it's rough which is good it gives the solder something to bind into but you can see what I'm saying here get a shiny surface which is what we got there Okay folks, this iron's been on for uh, about five minutes now and uh, it should be pretty warm so if I just bring the solder to it it's melting straight away as soon as you touch it, bingo now that's pretty good but it's a bit cold in the, in the shed here today so I might even leave it a bit longer just put that back in the holder and just let it go a bit more Okay folks, the iron's probably uh, warm enough now and what we're going to do is I'm going to bring it over and hold it on this rail here uh, where that shiny bit is and we're going to see what the impact of the heat is when I hold the iron there for a while. Uh, now what's going to happen is the heat's going to spread left and right along the rail and eventually it should have some impact on the plastic. So um, what I'll do is just bring the iron against the rail and just hold it there and I'll start counting and we'll see what happens. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. 28, 29, 30, 31, 30, now the rail's moving away, it's heated up at the back. Okay, I think that's, uh, that gives you an idea of what sort of range we've got there. Now I wonder if the solder will melt. No. Right, right folks, here we go. So what I'm doing, I'll bring the iron to the, the rail first. One two three four five and now the rails warm there we go it's a nice little joint there okay that's good enough 
Right now folks, what we need is a, a hole next to that solder there to put the wire through into the baseboard. So we'll just drill a hole. Okay folks, now we've now got our uh, rail soldered. Now a critical part of the way I do this sort of soldering is that I put solder on the parts that need to be joined before they're joined. Um, if you're trying to bring a wire up to the rail and then solder the whole lot in one go, I think it's more difficult than doing it this way. I solder the rail, then I put some solder on the wire, then I bring the wire to the rail and solder the two together and they, they join really quickly and really well. So the next thing to do is uh, to strip a bit of wire and we'll put some solder on the end of that. So we'll get that done. Now folks, this is where the, uh, the helping hands come in handy. And just touch the wire a bit first just to warm it up and then bring the solder and the iron together and just give the uh, wire a good coating of solder. Simple. Okay folks, now we want to um, solder our wire to the, uh, the, the the rail there. And so I put a little bit of a I put a little bit of a bend in the wire and then we'll feed it through the baseboard. Just pull it down. Now that bend is actually hooked over the top of the rail, but when I pull the wire through it's actually pushing against the solder. So I pull the wire down below the top of the rail and then we grab the iron. I'll just put a dab more solder on the iron. That'll do. And then we just quickly bring the iron on top there and the two lots of solder will melt. And we have our joint. Solid. And if you want, you can go over the top of that with a bit more solder. Just to tidy it up a bit. And that's pretty neat. That'll do. Okay, there we are. Now after this process, you might get a little bit of gunk on top of the rail from the soldering process so just clean it up there with a, a track rubber or I've got just some uh, very fine abrasive paper and uh, that'll sort that out otherwise uh, it might uh, stop your locos from going over that section if you don't clean the rail but that's it. Well, there we are folks uh, that's how it's done and uh, that will work on pretty much any sort of rail so the key to it is um, understand what your soldering iron will do in terms of how much heat it puts out. Uh, you don't necessarily need a really fine tip, a medium tip will do the job, but uh, whatever tip you've got or whatever iron you've got, understand how that iron works, you know, and how, how long it takes to heat up the materials that you're working on. Uh, clean, clean the rail, make sure you scrape it clean. Uh, your wire is already clean until it's stripped. So if you strip your wire and then solder it, the wire will take solder straight away. Solder the rail and then solder the wire and then solder the wire to the rail. And you will get a much better result, especially if you use really thin solder. Uh, it melts quickly and uh, you'll, you'll be a professional in no time, believe me. Um, I, I learned by trial and error and I started out with the um, standard packs of solder that come with the soldering iron which are about two to three times as thick as the stuff I'm using now and uh, uh, I tell you what I, I was hopeless when I first started but uh, you know you just keep at it and practice. Practice is a thing too. If you've got some old rail just uh, keep practicing with it and uh, you, you'll get the hang of it I'm sure you will. Okay cheers for now see you next week. Gourmet.